Simple Cyber Defense Weekly Updates for September 11th, 2021. Yeah, I mean, w- one of the things that we um, we fail to, to see is we see is we need to see behind all the pretty, you know, user experience that we see. Oh, it's uh, I'll upload my my driver's license and it'll just be on my phone. It'd be very convenient. Fine, if this is what you want, so if you want convenience, it's there for you. But the important part is, it's not just the fact of your driver's license being on. A server somewhere it's the digitization of information so every piece of information about you becomes a no, no, bunch of bits ones and zeros uh, so when your driver's license as soon as it leaves your as soon as there's an image of your driver's license being input anywhere it gets digitized so what does that mean it means i can extract information off of that driver's license in what if you look at the back, like here in California, for example, if you look on the back of the driver's license, there's a lot of security features on it. Well, those security features, you know, you can you scan your driver's license, you know, it's able to be read um, by certain scanners. Well, now 
your iPhone is going to be able to see the front and the back of your license, and then it digitizes all that information. Well, what happens to that information? That have the information goes and gets put on a server somewhere. Now I have lost complete control of my own information, and I won't know what would happen to it. It's let's say Apple, you know, never experiences a breach. They never have any incidents where information is lost or or, or, or unauthorized access to my information. But that is not the point. The point is now my information is digitized and somebody else has access to it and has ownership of it. Who retains that ownership? That we don't have enough regulation. Uh, and and do you retain that ownership to your to your information? And let's say you do. What guarantees those rights? Nothing guarantees those rights except the word of the person that you're handing that information to. Process. We have a new process of that. <laughs> Spoiler alert before we, you know, move on. Uh, I watch this. I, I'm not, I don't watch a lot of TV, right? And, and I don't, don't watch a lot of Netflix, but I, I, I got, it was recommended this, this new Netflix show called Clickbait. And I highly recommend it. Um, and then again, a spoiler alert again. Uh, you can plug your ears, Carl, if you plan on seeing it. But it, it, it's about uh, catfishing. And it's it's a limited series, eight episodes, and it's a roller coaster of emotions. Um, and at the end, of, or through every episode, you'll always think, "Oh, this guy, you know, he was he's a bad guy." And then at the end, you'll realize it's all a, a huge, huge catfishing scheme that was that was you know carried out by some somebody totally unsuspected that you would you would not you would not suspect that person at all. Um, and yeah, so that person who paid the ultimate price and everybody hated that person, at the end, it was proven and just because it's TV, not it's drama, it was proven oh, he was he was not in the wrong. But in real life, it would not end up this way for you. Uh, you know, sorry to say.
manipulated. surprise so I'm actually reading up on it a little bit kind of wanted to step back to that uh to that apple id thing and um i don't know but why is california not on there as as one of the states that the i mean apple is a california company we uh, and we uh, i don't i think well, i know <laughs> privacy laws It's interesting. It's interesting. Uh, 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 I, these these states are I wouldn't say are are as technically solid as states like you know New York, California, and you know states where there's actually a lot of tech and tech industry. So weird. Maybe they want a smaller smaller population to test it on first.
Cool. All right, moving on to uh, our last topic here. Um, uh, so this this uh, this was a publication by uh, ProPublica. Um, so WhatsApp moderators can read your messages. Oh, really? That's that sounds that sounds about right. Uh, if 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 you remember when Facebook first came out, before it had anything to do with when WhatsApp came came out, before it had to do anything with with Facebook, the main reason people used it, even though we didn't understand what it was, is because of end to end encryption. And what that means is end to end means from one user from one end to the other user, the other end. That's it. There's no one in between. There's like a tunnel, right? And the information passes through that tunnel, and there's only one entry point and one exit point. Well. Uh, and what, what confirmed that was a 2018 Senate hearing when Zuck said, hey, we do not see any of the content on WhatsApp. It's fully encrypted. And of course, everybody believed him uh, because, you know, he was under oath. But of course, nobody can hold him responsible because he's an individual. He's not, a, you know, he's, he's not speaking on his own behalf. He's speaking on behalf of a corporation. But anyway, we're not going to go there. Um, but. Yeah, as of three days ago, um, if you re if you read the terms of services, it says on on. Of course, nobody reads that. We can't read or listen to your personal conversations as they are end to end encrypted, and the emphasis is there, end to end encrypted, and this will never change. Okay, well, this is not true because there. Uh, when ProPublica did uh, uh, a research on this, they found that WhatsApp, that Facebook has a thousand moderators that work on the WhatsApp team. Well, if you don't see data, then why do you have moderators to begin with? And now to have that large number of moderators, that means you're actually, there's a lot of data that you're looking at. And also they found out that WhatsApp will hand over metadata to law enforcement. And that the company has for a very long time shared user data among its ecosystem. And what does that mean? It means it can use information that it gathers from your WhatsApp messages and from your WhatsApp conversations and all the information you have put in there and uses it with third party, uh, third party apps. So those third party apps can give you personalized suggestions on your online behavior. Well, again, if this is what, if this is your philosophy, I'd rather have convenience over, uh, you know, anonymity that's fine that's your choice but you have to know what where your information is so you can protect your information protect your data just in case you know it falls in the wrong hands you want to be protected um now th this report it just it just gives us a clear picture of the practices of you know of, of facebook and of what how they operate because we know they are making money off of sharing that data when they say we share with third party applications that means they're selling information to third party application. Third party means somebody that has nothing to do with you or Facebook. Facebook is just making the money. That exactly, right? Um, also, on, 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 on another, uh, on the flip side of that, let's say you're having a conversation with, with somebody or you're having a conversation in a group. And, and there are some in, in other parts of the world. It's not very common here, at least in California where I live, but WhatsApp is very big as far as being uh, uh, like having large groups on there, uh, like hundreds of people and they're, they're discussing a certain topic. It's kind of like a, a subreddit, but it's just a WhatsApp group. Um, well, if somebody reports you, if somebody reports to the group, Facebook says that they have access or, to all the messages, but all they look at is the latest messages that were posted after a report was given to be able to dictate whether what was said or any picture if any pictures were shared uh violate their terms of services well in, in in cases where you know like uh csam child sexual abuse material uh, or blackmail or sexual oriented businesses that's that's fine i mean we want some type of uh, of protection for for the weak but we can't have this type of protection without regulation again i, I keep pushing for this and, and a lot a lot of us in the cyber security industry we don't want regulation we, we, we despise regulation. We, we want freedom. That's why we have millions of open source software that we use where it's kind of like, I wouldn't say it's anarchy, but it's, it's our way of protesting, you know, all the data that's being mined of us. Uh, but at the same time, we cannot have enforcement without regulation. Um, uh, 
like for example earlier uh, on uh on an on and on on in an op-ed for wired earlier this year whatsapp had wrote that the company submitted four hundred thousand reports to child child safety authorities alone and people have been persecuted uh as con as a con uh, prosecuted as as a consequence well i thought it was end-to-end -end encrypted and now you tell me there's four hundred thousand reports just of one issue alone that 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 completely destroys the trust between me as a user and the and the company right now we had like we, we've been talking about the apple csam uh you know feature that's being rolled out and why it should be monitored and all that um and but again there there, there are certain services for that and we can't force the enforcement we can't start enforcement before regulation um in uh what whatsapp also discloses in their terms of services that when an account is reported it received the most recent messages and it is also it also received uh uh anything like uh their phone number their profile photo, their linked Facebook account, if they have a linked Instagram account, their IP address, their mobile I, their mobile phone ID, all that stuff, and and all the metadata that comes with that. Now, this is this is very scary. This is very scary, especially if it's coming from a company that says, "Hey, we, we are," and and they lie, and their you know their boss, they lie, they, he lies in front of the Senate, right? Like, hey, we don't we don't do this, but we actually do. So, what what would I do? Honestly. Just, just because WhatsApp is part of Facebook, they completely just lost all my trust. But I would recommend going to a, something that's different, that you find an open source messaging app that you use. And if you know the people that you communicate with most of the time, these are the ones that you share that information with because you don't want your information out there. You want to protect your information as much as you can. You have anything to add to this, Carl? Yeah, go ahead. The thing that I always I always like that I always think about are we are we okay with allowing our civil liberties be trampled on just to protect the weak like children? Yeah. Is that is that I mean and and this is not a question that you can answer in, in, in one sitting. You know, you actually have to sit there and, and I honestly I think yeah, I, I don't think I don't think you can find an answer to that question. <laughs>
I think uh thing just does it. what was in this episode, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing with others. For more information, to suggest a topic, or to donate, head over to simplecyberdefense.com.